after this, he then goes into, he's got a great routine with, with a tarot card, with, the, with a tarot card, with tarot card, which is called Major Arcana. I should remember that, I cannot, shouldn't I? Uh, Major Arcana, which is uh, a, a trick using dice and tarot. And again, you're reading it going, that can't happen. It's, it's it uses, you know, somebody, two people, somebody rolls a dice three times. The number they do, that's, that's where you go on this, this, these, um, this spread of tarot cards and it matches. So it's, uh, matches a, a prediction um it's it's again it's really falling it's brilliant he gives you a really good presentation for this and again it made me reach for my tarot cards and then this esp trick bob's your uncle based on a bob carver idea this again it's it's actually it's a similar thing than uh, the oracle system but not using gimmick cards using esp cards and i don't know why we don't all know this trick it's i mean a lot of people do clearly but it's it just uses 10 esp cards and that's it and you match them all and you put them down first in the same way as you do with the oracle system now i did talk about this larry becker idea espitomy which is a really good trick based on the same thing but that does use a gimmick but this is all completely um examinable and uh, i have performed this to people i know you know friends and family and it totally goes and it's a really really nice simple idea and it, he says that it's one of his favorite things to perform in that sort of situation and i can see why it's just it's easy and incredibly strong now the next bit i put a, <laughs> i put a photo on my instagram real magic review by the way have a look um of, of you know and said what book do you think i'm um reviewing and i just spent this weekend i spent a lot of time tearing up pieces of paper quarto is doug's center tears billet tear and i I've, i'm a big fan of center tears i've been performing richard bush's zen center tear for a long time he gave me permission to teach it i think it's so so powerful so this wasn't over different but it it's well he goes into this whole essay again on um on center tears and I, I love that you know I've, it really helped me to read back in when I was learning it to read not only Richard Bush's book Peak Performances but also uh, Ted Leslie's book Power of Miracles because it doesn't I, I like the theory on it I want to know what you know what how I should do this and Doug goes loads into that he goes you know the pros and cons of certain tears again you get this kind of master class on center tears and why this one is a really good one because it, it there's a certain criteria and he's got this list of criteria of of you know what you should the detail you should look at to make this convincing because people have got a problem with center tears haven't they they kind of go or, or billet tears whether they're center or not of, of kind of going well why would you tear it up and he, he, he thinks about all this stuff and gives you presentational ideas but this is amazing because not only is it easy and he says don't be fooled by how easy it is make sure you put the work in you have and he tells you where to look when you're doing certain things this is all gold but also you can get two peaks in one in in basically four tears of the paper and which is so you can get two different people there's a different idea from from other mentalists as well and he's got some really good input from other mentalists that, that say why they use this sanitary and different ideas and what um revelations they came to while performing it or performing a, a billet tear so you really it does get you over that hump of doing it because it is a very quite a scary thing to get that peak the first few times you do it and it always feels a bit daunting um, but yeah, you rip up, you get two, you can get people write two different things. You've got it there. They give it to them. They hold it. And just really, really fair. I love this. This has now replaced my center tear. It's brilliant. And again, if you've not looked into them before, uh, I keep saying center tears. It doesn't have billet tears. Um, this is an amazing place to start. And I think you will do this one. I have ordered lots of index cards. As if it couldn't get in a bit. I think you might be starting a sort of suss out that I like this book but the next chapter was for me just stunning and it's really opened up a whole new idea for me so it's called uh, Zen Xenomancy it's, it's, I always say Xena cards it's Xena cards and he, really importantly he, he always tells us the right there's some brilliant footnotes of going into the history of all this stuff by the way and which you can take into your presentations but it goes into Xena cards but he also tell you the uh, correct pronunciations which was really important for the next bit because he this is a whole again big essay on doing readings with ESP cards now I'm learning to do readings with tarot but there's a lot of cards <laughs> to go through with ESP cards there are five and he not only 
it isn't just, oh, you could say this. That's not what it is at all. He starts off by linking it to Eastern philosophy. So the, um, the Wu Xing, which is this, which I didn't know anything about, which is a basically, it's a model, for want of a better word, um, of how this links to sort of earth, fire, wood, metal, um, the other one. <laughs> uh, did I say water? No. Uh, but th again, he's telling you so this can go into your readings, but it's also a acts as a kind of mnemonic. So he, he talks about yin and yang, and, and this is really deeply interesting. But by the time you've read all that stuff, you go, right, now it, here's how you do the readings. And it gives you that way of remembering everything, but also how the cards link together. So if you deal out free ESP symbols, the reason you would link them together in a certain way to make it a really powerful reading. And, and again, by reading, he isn't, he isn't saying give give someone just a load of tosh uh, he's saying you can actually this can be a really helpful thing in a way that tarot can be you know you you're just you're not trying to guess things in their life and of course getting hits would be amazing but you're trying to give them a, a really good example and he talks about um experience and he talks about you know how you'll you'll always see the person doing readings that, that are booked to do readings with a queue of people sitting in one place and and the person kind of doing the magic, having to go around everybody. And it's just this really nice thing that people are fascinated with. But the system he gives you is absolutely brilliant. And I just, I could see it enhancing so much. Like I do a thing with the, you know, I, I review BM Magic and I do that with my online shows. But to be able to actually re do a proper reading as I'm putting these cards down is a, is, is a gift. And, and I've, I've done a couple. I just kind of make it up based on what I see. And... And it, you can see people are really, really fascinated by it. So you haven't just got this matching effect if you're doing that. You've got this whole process. And then the matching it gives you that other magical thing. But even without the matching, learning this, this way of doing a reading with ESP cards was really important to me. Because even though I'm really fascinated by tarot, I'm not sure how much of it I'll actually do. I'm kind of learning it for myself. But I love the way this kind of joins the sort of more spiritual with the scientific. There's a scientific look to these Xena cards, isn't there, that, that, that Tarot doesn't have, and that's going to turn some people off from performing it. And when I talked about the Oracle system, a lot of people have said to me, it's great, but I just can't see myself doing it. It doesn't suit me. But this, I think, will suit a lot more people. And to, to put this, you don't have to do it in a kind of really woo-woo way. You can just be conversationally doing it as you turn it over and making it something special. I, this chapter was worth, well, all of them really, but was worth the price of the book itself. I got so much out of this and I really suggest you spend some time with this. And it's something that I've already started rereading and I will go back to again and again. Okay, well, this is going to be a very long review, so I've got to go into less, less uh, detail. But th those were the real, really amazing things to me. The next one, sign language, is this idea, again, which he's become quite well known for. This idea of divining someone's zodiac sign just by talk, sign just by talking to them and, and and it's this incredible kind of verbal just ver merely verbal way of kind of talking to someone and going you are a cancer or a sagittarius it's it's a system he gives you which which again you know you're going to take that and you could do it and, and he says it's a great thing for when someone goes oh, i mind reader read my mind they go okay well, we'll try this and you're just talking to someone and you get it it's it's so strong so clever and again, something you're going to want to go back to. And then he's got to, to sort of, because that's something that's going to take you quite a long time to learn. But then he's got a thing called verbiage, which is a verbal <laughs> force of a word, which I couldn't believe it worked. It was like, it was basically, you say something to someone, they say when you go, yeah. And it's not 100, 100, 100 percent. But I went downstairs to my daughter and just did it. And I'd written a little prediction. And she said the word that came into her head. And I went, there you go. And she, she looked at me and went, just utterly speechless it was brilliant uh so there are things in here that you will be able to take into i've kind of focused on the, the, the really meaty stuff here but there's loads of stuff that is incredibly strong that you'll be able to do fairly quickly especially if you've spent time you know putting the groundwork in with the the quick stack 3.0 which again you'll learn from much quicker than you thought you would okay so just to just to tie up i'm just going to i'm going to go through the rest um and I don't want you to think the, the reason I'm going through the rest more quickly is because I'm, it's, it's, it's trivial. It's really not, because there's some stunning stuff in. Mystery Melange is just it, 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 it's different routines you can do um, that don't fit into those other categories, which, again, some, this idea of pennies from heaven routine, which is just someone flipping an imaginary coin in their head and you saying that you're going to be the first out of two people to, 
to find the, the the sequence of three that they come up with. That probably doesn't make much sense. But again, it's a it's a total mental thing, and, and it's nice because it involves two people. Uh, the real thing, which I thought was a brilliant routine, wh where you take um, it's one of those things you do on stage. Great for a corporate event, so you get like nine people on stage, all holding a bit of paper, and it seems really really fair. And and they turn it around and the, the words spell out something. So it almost feels like a chair test without the chairs. It's a, it's a prediction and you could put like a message, a corporate message on there. Uh, and again, you've got this, this idea that it, it come, you know, the whole routine is in an envelope, maybe an A4 sized envelope. But you've got this thing where you've got nine, ten, whatever people on stage and it plays really, really big. And actually, I would say all of this stuff plays big. And towards the, the end of the book, we've got... Um, a really nice marking system. He, he talks about how he likes to have his own marking system and there's some great mark decks out there, but it's nice if he has to do something and he hasn't got his mark deck, we can always make one up quickly and he goes through this in detail and in the end it's something you're going to be able to read really, really easily and make up very easily and it makes it very intuitive. It makes complete sense. And th just banging on now, and I wish I could talk about all of the things in here, so really do check out the book, but he's got a selection of essays at the end called Musings, where he goes into his idea on performance, his idea on practice, and, and there's some great stuff on practice, actually, all these routines are the best way to practice them, and, and you know, and the, the, it kind of summed it up at the end for me, really, when I read these these essays of how much of a performer he actually is. Now, apparently he doesn't perform very much anymore and he, he's more of a thinker and a writer and, 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 and again, he's quite underground, but he, he thinks like a performer. And, and, and he's got all these other performers that have used his work and contribute to this book. And at the end, actually, there's a whole section of different people's routines he's either used in the past or, or maybe changed or maybe not, but just that he wants to share that some of them recently unpublished. Um, so he's got, he, he, he has performed, but he's also got the mind of a performer. And I do think sometimes with these kind of mentalism books, you do, you do read them and think, has this person actually ever done this? But the, every single word tells you that he has. He, he, he's a brilliant teacher. It's a book that gives you everything you need for these concepts. You really don't need anything else. You don't need to go and read about magic squares anywhere else. And I'm not saying you shouldn't because it's always good to have different people's input, but it just, it takes all these influences and gives them to you in a really, really accessible way. And I do think that this is one of my favourite mentalism books now, you know, and it's another book that's really made me feel very sad about the time that I thought I'm not doing mentalism. Uh, and I sold, you know, I sold my PK subtleties and I sold my bulletproof, which I, you know, and I, and I, and the, and the, the Barry Richardson books. And actually it felt very similar when I first read those Barry Richardson books. They were so rich with usable stuff that I'm so good I sold them. And this, I felt very similar reading this. I was just reading it without the stuff. And I could do that with the Barry Richardson book. So I remember kind of not needing to pick up the stuff going, this is just gold. This is brilliant. And I was becoming more knowledgeable and a better, better magician and performer just reading them. And again, with this, I was feeling the same way. It is, I think this, it will be sad if this didn't become um, as recognised as it should because it's really special. It's a really, it's, you're going to build foundations if you are a new mentalist um, and you'll just get into it. It's a solid book to learn that stuff. A bit like PK Subtleties and the Barry Richardson stuff and the Bob Cassidy book and all Banachek stuff. But it's also a really interesting, enjoyable read. And if you're an established mentalist, I think there'll be loads in here for you as well. And, and I think it's just, it's just a really, really solid piece of work. And I'm glad it's come out because before this, I didn't even know who Doug Diamond, Doug Diamond was. And I'm really, really, uh, I'm really glad I am now. And then he said Diamond Dogs then by Bowie, Doug, 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 Doug Diamond. Uh, so you might, I'm, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about going back to those uh, post-it notes and really getting the stuff out. I've, I, I text Doug and just said, you know, I'm reviewing your book and do you know where I can get a really decent set of ESP cards because some of them are really plasticky and, and he really helped me out but I realised I forgot that I've got some because I bought some ages ago 
and I've been getting them out and playing with them and, and like I said, trying this stuff out. You're going to want to do this stuff. You're not going to have to invest loads more money. You're going to have to invest a little bit of time, but probably not as much as you think. And I think you're going to absolutely love this book. This has been a very long review, but it took me a very long time to read it. And I did just didn't want to say, oh, it's good. Um, and, you know, oh, it's not going to be for everyone, but it's going to be for most people. And I think it will enhance everything about your magic, the way you think about premise. You know, he talks about that thing of... You've got to give this stuff more meaning. You can't just throw it away. It's a wasted opportunity. And, it, and it, it's none of, this, none of these pages in this book are wasted. And if you don't buy this book, I genuinely think it is a wasted opportunity if you are into this kind of stuff. So that's Calculated Thoughts by Doug Diamond. I thought it was rather good. All the links will be below. Thank you for Vanishing Link for sending it to me. Do please use the links below if you're going to buy them. They are not affiliate links, but it's just nice that people know that my reviews work. Uh, if they do, and uh, please like, subscribe, check out carbmagiccourse.com and have a great one. Cheers.